Hello everyone, welcome to another session of this textbook services. In this session, I'll be taking you through the process of using and creating amazing effects with Turbo Splines plugin. Turbo Splines can be used to create exquisite animation titles and complex root geometry. So without further ado, let's start by bringing up its dialog here. These are some of its default parameters. To create and install this toolbar, first Google the word TurboSpline to visit their website, followed by downloading the script. In 3ds Max, simply click on the scripting toolbar and choose to run script. Pick the TurboSpline from the list and open it to install. Once installed, click on the Customize toolbar and choose the Customize User Interface option. In the Customize User Interface dialog, go to the Toolbar button and click on the Category Commands. Scroll down and choose the Spline Dynamics command from the list. The Turbo Spline is here. There's also the Spline Cleaner plugin, which was installed a bit earlier. To create the button toolbar, simply click on a new toggle and name it as Test for demonstration purposes only. Next, click on the Turbo Spline's action and drag it inside the new button followed by snapping it anyway on a toolbar area to place it correctly. Right-click and choose to delete this duplicated TurboSpline toolbar. That's how the original TurboSpline toolbar was created. Click the button again to bring up its dialog. To quickly take you through some of its main parameters, let's start by going to the Shapes command panel and click on the text button. Type in TurboSpline and click on the front viewport to create the text. Right click to exit the creation. In the creation parameters, under create modify ruler parameters, while the text is selected, click on the add pass button. The toggle to add from the list allows users to click and choose a path or a spline from the dialog. It's the same as selecting a text in a scene and clicking on the add pass button. This toggle is to remove paths and this one is to clear paths from the list. Enable the mesh type. Under mesh type, we have a cylinder as a default type. When clicked, there's a list of other mesh types to choose from. We have the capsule mesh, box, profile, and any customized mesh you want to add to the list. For the purpose of this exercise, we are going to use a profile. Let's start by clicking on the star shape button and dragging it in the viewport to create it. Next, Click on a mesh type and choose the profile from the list, followed by clicking on the Art Shape button, or by simply clicking on this toggle and choosing the profile in a dialog. The Mesh Spread Path function allows users to set the number of geometry for each defined path. Users can also set the variation percentage here. Under Extra Features, users can choose to taper the geometry and tip or slice. This last button is to build geometry using all the parameters set earlier. When happy with all settings, simply click to build geometry. Accept the max script message by clicking yes. Under the modifier panel, all these modifiers are being added to emulate the parameters previously set. This is what was created with the parameters previously set. As you can see here, 16 objects have been automatically created and selected. This is to give users the flexibility to edit and manipulate each object individually. Also, a selection set was created in case they are deselected and users want to quickly select them again. Here's a list of all the new splines created. Everything created can be edited by clicking on the Edition button here. Since they're all selected, we can tweak the scale value by tinkering with its spinner here. When we look closely, we can clearly see the star shape perfectly wrapped around the text. Users can also set the segments to smooth the edges. Enable the edge faces to see the segments in the viewport. As the segment values are reduced, the surface edges are less smooth. Let's increase it now to smooth the edges. The height percentage can also be tweaked with and be animated. Users can rotate the geometry to create exquisite animations. The twist function is also available. 
There's also the stretch function. The path for centers is quite useful for animations sweeping across. Variations can also be applied. And the slice options can also be used for animations. To create specific types of animations, simply click on the animation button. Under animation type, we can choose to move along the path by percentage, to grow and reveal as a slice. For the purpose of this exercise, we are going to use the move path by percentage. This function allows users to set the starting time. It's set to start at frame 0 by default. However, users can set it to start at a different frame. Here, we have the single animation length group, animations order offset. Users can offset animations with the minimum and maximum values. Here we have the path percentage options group, the easing types, delete animation. For the purpose of this exercise, we are going to leave the current settings as they are and click to create modify animation. The full animation was automatically created. As you can see, there's an animation key on frame 0 and on frame 100. The keyframes can be selected individually or as a group of selections as they currently are. Users can move the keyframes to specific timelines if desired. Next, let's move the animation slider to see what was created. Users can delete the current animation by clicking this button and create a new animation if desired. In a tool selection, users can choose to convert from number splines, our turbo smooth modifier. This tool is quite useful to smooth out surfaces. To quickly go through the elixator parameters, let's start by creating a spline and clicking this button. On this dialog, we have the number of turns to set. It's currently set to 10. We have the proportional to path length, the start radius. For the purpose of this exercise, we're going to set it to 5mm to start with. The radius is currently locked. Users can unlock if they wish to. There's also the variation function and vertices per turn. To create the helix space on these parameters, simply click to select source splines, pick the spline in a dialog and click the create ellipsis button. Let's change female parameters and create another helix. Open the modify panel and make the spline renderable and visible in the viewport. Repeat the same action with a second helix and click to convert renderable spline to turbo spline objects. It's now converted. To quickly go through the extra features parameters, let's go to the creation parameters and add the spline from the scene. Next, enable the taper, tip and slice options. Following that, click to build geometry. When you tweak with the slice and position values, the slice position moves from its original position. The tip parameters control the tip of the geometry. Users can also invert the tape by enabling its function and achieve amazing results with the remaining parameters. This furniture animation was created for a client using tuber splines. The animation consists of the chair appearing gradually on the screen by sweeping through its splines. This is the final render. Let's move the slider to preview the animation. For more information about Turbo Splines, simply check the link descriptions. I really hope you find this video useful, like and share it. And I hope to see you on the next one.